For two years, I served as the graduate assistant for a program called Engineering Ambassadors, a group that I was also involved in as an undergraduate. Engineering Ambassadors is an organization that was created to ch help change the perception of engineering, and also to specifically target the recruitment of underrepresented minorities in engineering. I remember when I was graduating high school, my guidance counselors would say to me, you're good at math, you're good at science, have you considered engineering? However, there is a social perception that is shared by both boys and girls that girls are not as good at math and science. So those recruiting strategies probably didn't work on many of my female classmates. And that's unfortunate because studies have shown that there is no difference in cognition between boys and girls when it comes to math and science, nor is there a significant difference in test scores. It's just a baseless and damaging stereotype, a stereotype that we need to avoid if we're going to effectively recruit the next generation of engineers. We also need problem solving, curiosity, teamwork, creativity, communication, and a desire to solve the world's problems. And those are qualities that all children share. During my time in Engineering Ambassadors, um, I learned a lot about the lack of diversity in engineering that has been caused by these poor recruiting, message, recruiting messages. During my time in Engineering Ambassadors, I found myself making a case for the organization and its goals to a lot of my white male colleagues. And I had to explain to them, despite their lack of firsthand experience with this problem, why diversity in engineering is important and why it is important that we change our recruiting messages to achieve it. And through that, I developed three main cases for diversity, a moral case, an economic case, and a business case. Now, the moral case is an easy one. It is wrong that women and people of color are underrepresented in engineering. It is 2017, and we have only slightly higher levels of diversity than we did in the 80s. So instead, allow me to appeal to your bottom line with an economic case and a business case. Now, the first argument for the economic case is that getting more women involved in engineering will help decrease the gender wage gap. In the United States, a woman makes 78 cents for every dollar a man makes when comparing the median salaries of both genders. This suggests that career choice is a very large influence on the gender wage gap. And in fact, the Georgetown University Center for Education and the Workforce found that of the top 10 highest paying college majors, nine are heavily dominated by men. And of the 10 lowest paying college majors, nine are heavily dominated by women. And what's more, those nine highest paying majors are all engineering majors. So if we get more women involved in engineering and STEM careers, we can help close that gender wage gap. Diversity is also good for business. Moving from a homogenous team to a 50-50 gender split has been shown to increase revenue by up to 41%. Also, companies in the highest quartile for gender diversity are 15% more likely to have financial returns above national industry medians. And those in the highest quartile for racial diversity are 35% more likely. Also, companies with more women and people of color in upper management positions are more likely to introduce new products and radical new innovations to the market. This is because diverse teams bring new perspectives, they challenge preconceptions, and they make their team members more likely to remain objective. So diversity shouldn't just be an empty platitude for businesses. It should be a requirement for their success. So how do we do this? Well, it's a very complicated problem, but luckily we're attacking it from all sides. Engineering Ambassadors is a good example of a program that was created with industry and nonprofit partners in order to help change people's perception of engineering. The National Academy of Engineers created four messages called the Changing the Conversation Messages, which were specifically crafted in order to target underrepresented minorities in engineering. Those messages are, engineers are creative problem solvers. Engineers make a world of difference. Engineering is essential to our health, happiness, and safety. And engineers help shape the future. It's amazing how quickly and effectively these messages can change the way a student feels about engineering. By the time we would leave the middle schools or high schools on our engineering ambassadors visits, the students had already taken to using the word engineer as a synonym for fix or solve. And that's the goal. Because not only is that better for recruitment, but it's also a better reflection of reality. So instead of talking about those integrals and differential equations, talk about those problems that you're actively working to solve. For example, don't just wave your hands and say math and science as a way of avoiding technical details to your audience. Your technical details are really cool and your audience will care about them, provided that you explain them on a level that your audience can understand and relate to. Are you doing work that is reducing the emissions of a gas turbine? If so, talk about how your work is essential to our health, happiness, and safety. 
Did something you invent or work on help enable breakthroughs in gas turbine technology? If so, you're helping to shape the future. These may seem like really small changes, but they have a real measurable impact on the way people perceive engineering and also our ability to, to recruit underrepresented minorities. Using the changing the conversation messages can help us solve this problem. And this is something that we as young engineers can do that will have a very large impact. And it's something that you can start doing now, today. And I hope you do.